Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Feel Good Friday. I'm your host, Trey Holiday, and we have an amazing lineup of interviews that we're going to be sharing with you all today on this Feel Good Friday. One of the tips I want to give you as, as we are dealing with that gloomy weather out there, I love that you guys can tune in with us right here on Converge Media every Friday, and we're giving you some content that's going to make you feel good. One of the greatest things about doing this work is that we get to spotlight and showcase the work of so many different people people out there in community who are doing their own work in their own feel-good ways. And honestly, the work of community is so vast and wide that we have so many other folks that we want to share with you guys as this series continues. And today, I get the chance to share with you guys a couple of interviews that I was able to take throughout this week, um, one of them even today. And we got to sit down with Fire Chief of Seattle, Chief Scoggins. Uh, he talks about their diversity recruitments effort uh, over there at the fire department throughout the county and how he's connected with a lot of different fire chiefs all across the county to bring diversity recruitment right to our front gates and really make it accessible for people from the community to see the pathways of becoming a, a fire chief, becoming a, per, a person who's in the fire department, just being able to be there and open up the opportunities for them to see themselves as part of the solution as he has done with his illustrious career. We also got the chance to sit down with a local business owner, Matt Wells of Bomb Face Co. He's going to tell us a little bit about his beginnings, uh, what got him started, and the ways that he's been building the brand of Bomb Face. It's an amazing athletic wear brand that you can cop right here. It's local, but he's also got a national presence online. Uh, and then I also sat down with Dr. Relina Joseph of the UW as she talks about their their innovative approach around inclusivity of voices. It's going to be a jam-packed session. Uh, we're also going to be able to share with you guys an opportunity that's coming up next weekend through the Institute of African Centered Thought. I sat down with Dr. Arisha Day Awadola and Marsha Warfield herself, a, a comedian and actress. Um, you guys may know her from her role, a longtime role on Night Court, where she was a no-nonsense bailiff. Uh, love that show from back in the early 90s, late 80s, uh, and she still brings the funnies. She's going to be a part of the efforts for Institute of African Center Thought for this year and their Ancestral Healing Conference, which Dr. Arisha Day shares with us that has started almost 30 years ago. So a longstanding effort from all the folks over there at I I act, and I'm excited that they have this event coming up this this year, where they're going to be really paying tribute and homage to Dr. Mims and her life and legacy. So, thank you guys again for joining us on this amazing Feel Good Friday. We're going to kick it off after this short break. You guys are watching Feel Good Friday with me, Trey Holiday. On October 23rd, we unveiled the new Converge Media Studios to Stephanie Johnson Tolliver of the Black Heritage Society of Washington State who along with Damon Brown of Creative Lou designed our interview wall with epic images of Seattle's black community of yesteryear from the late Al Smith's photography collection at Mohai. We often speak about our past, our community, our culture, our traditions. Though times have changed for us here in the Emerald City, Converge Media is firmly rooted in our history and grounded in our legacy while focused on the future. We want to say thank you to all of you who support Converge Media. Just know that you are the difference. You made this studio possible, and because of you, we continue to grow and thrive in our purpose. So be on the lookout for new, impactful, and educational programming from Converge Media. And remember, Black Media Matters. 
Welcome back, everybody. As I promised you, we're going to get right into it here. I'm going to start with our interview that I did with Chief Scoggins. Uh, we're going to show you a little clip here. And, and as always, all of these interviews are everywhere, uh, all throughout our platforms, anywhere you find Converge Media. You guys should be able to see the full interviews of all these amazing guests. But we're going to start right now with Fire Chief Scoggins right here of the Fire Department of Seattle as he breaks down the effort that they're doing, very intentional to to bring more diversity into the fire department. Hi, everybody. It's me, Trey Holiday, and I have the pleasure right now of sitting down with Fire Chief Scoggins. He's going to tell us about some diversity initiatives that they have going on over at the fire department. What's up, Chief? Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, and congratulations on the new space. Yeah, thank you. You know, this is really the first time we're using our heritage wall. So I'm so glad that we get to do that with you, break the ground with you. I'm happy to be the first. <laughs> well, you were telling us a little mm -hmm. bit about some of the intensity that you guys are doing around diversity recruitment. Please, yeah. let's share a little bit about what's going on over there at the fire department. Sure, absolutely. So this isn't just a Seattle fire department effort. This is an effort by the King County Fire Chiefs. You know, a few years ago, we stood up a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee, and we really wanted to take intentional steps on how to move this effort forward. So I'm fortunate enough to work with a great group of chiefs from around the county, and what we're doing right now is we're planning for our first diversity workshop, which will be held December 11th. The city of Bellevue is gonna be hosting, and a big shout out and a thank you to Fire Chief Jay Hagan, who's the Bellevue Fire Chief for allowing their space for us to hold this workshop. Well, this is really exciting. I mean, when we talk about, you know, people bringing their lived experience into roles, service roles like the fire department, it really does actually benefit both sides. Uh, you guys are doing this and actually being intentional about young people getting engaged. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the parameters for this diversity recruitment? Uh, absolutely. And we are targeting young people, but we're targeting people who may be looking for a career change. But the young people really are the future. We have a lot of programs around the county, not just in Seattle, but fire departments all across the county. So no matter really where you live, there's an opportunity for you. What we're going to be doing at this workshop, because we know it takes time to get educated on what it takes to become a firefighter and really be prepared to compete for the position. So we're going to be talking about um, how to prepare for the written exam, how to prepare for the oral interview physically and mentally. How do I prepare my mind and my body and my spirit for a job as challenging as this? So all those different aspects and components of the job, we're going to have speakers, subject matter experts. We're going to have four different breakout sessions. So it's not just one talking head in a room for four hours. We got breakout rooms planned. There's going to be a continental breakfast. We're going to have lunch for you. We want to feed you because we want it to be a great experience. And there's going to be opportunities to connect with programs that continue to build you up. Well, that's really important. And I think that you guys uh, bringing all of the fire chiefs together throughout the county is so key to this mm -hmm. because obviously, it, you know, we understand that there's a need across the county. It's not just about Seattle. How have you been able to connect with all of these other chiefs to make sure that this effort is strong in all of the, the cities throughout the county? Sure. You know, the fire departments in general and the fire chiefs, we have really strong relationships because we rely on each other. No one department can do it all, whether it's the emergency, whether it's the recruitment, no matter what it is. We lean on each other all the time. We share ideas. We share best practices because that's how we become better together. This is another one of those efforts of us becoming better together. And I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to some of the members of our uh, King County DEI committee. We have Fire Chief Eric, Eric Hicks, who's the Skyway Fire Chief, Fire Chief Adrian Shepard, who's the Redmond Fire Chief, Fire Chief Steve Heitman, who's the Renton Fire Chief, Fire Chief Jeff Clark, Eastside Fire and Rescue, Fire Chief Matt Morris, who's um, Puget Sound Fire Chief, and then uh, we also have Tequila's Fire Chief. But Jay Hagan and Bellevue has really laid it out for us to stand up this first workshop. 
Well, there you have it, folks. Fire Chief Scoggins was, you know, making sure that his effort is loud and clear and all the effort of all the fire chiefs throughout the county as they come together to make this happen. Um, it's an exciting thing. And if you guys know of anybody who's, you know, 16 years of age or older that may be looking to get into the, the career of becoming, you know, into the fire department, if they are looking into these opportunities, there's amazing opportunity for them to get plugged into this event coming up. So you guys heard it right there from Fire Chief. And you guys, again, can find the full interview right here on Converge Media on all of our platforms. Uh, right after this short break, I'm going to get into my interview with Matt Wells with Bomb Face Co. Stay tuned, you guys. You're watching Feel Good Friday. <laughs> It's Gordon here on Converge Media, giving you that tip you didn't know you needed for Market Street Shoes over in Ballard. Check this out. Not only do they have great shoes for the summertime, but they have the shoes that you didn't even know you needed for the fall and winter. We all know it not only rains and snows a lot out here, so you definitely need those boots, but you also need a little bit of luggage or at least a bag to put your clothes in because let's be frank, we all love to get out of here during the fall and winter and go somewhere a little bit warmer so whether you need accessories shoes or a little bit of luggage to jump on that plane trust and believe market street shoes has everything that you need you just need to pull up and find it Welcome back, everybody, to Feel Good Friday. I'm your host, Trey Holiday, and I uh, love being able to spotlight our local brands. You guys know I'm one of the people that is always there to support them, whether we're having an event for them, whether I find them online. The idea is that we actually are able to circulate the black dollar is really within our hands at this point. Uh, we've been spotlighting black business here on Converge Media for a long time, and I love being able to sit down with folks like Matt Wells, who are so passionate about what they do in they pour it into their work um, in a real apparent way. And the clothes that he makes are phenomenal. So you guys get to see me sporting one of Bomb Face's hoodies um, as Matt Wells takes us down his history and tells us a little bit more about how he built the brand Bomb Face. Of course, man. I mean, I told you when I saw you out there, I'm like, oh, no, we got to get your brand out there. Anything I can do to help support our local brands. I'm all about it, not just wearing the fits, but then right. also being able to really spotlight the people behind the gear. And I think it's so important for people to understand your story. Let's kind of start at the beginning. Like, what was it about your childhood that made you say, you know what, I'm, I'm a creative. I know I am. I got something to give. Start us at the beginning, Matt. So um, let me start at the very beginning. I was six years old or five years old, and I was drawing a piece of a cartoon on a and my mom seen it and she was like, do you know what you can do? And I was like, no, nah, I'm just drawing the picture that's on the TV. And then she was like, well, you can draw really good. So I was able to look at something and draw it just w without pretty much not messing up. So been an artist from a long time, but then I, uh, I got into sports and sports took over um, over my life. But my mom was a seamstress. So I knew fabrics and clothing, different things like that. But that's like kind of like my prior story. And a lot of people don't know that. Mm. But that's just that's just the very beginning of my you know, knowing and my dad was an entrepreneur, he had his own construction company, different things like that. So those those are the things that kind of like my building blocks of like being an entrepreneur, seeing him work, providing for the family and different things like that, that, you know, I knew I was going to be an entrepreneur later on down the line. But it's just little things, you know, you got to find your niche on what you like and what you, uh, how can you put the things together? And once I found everything put together and kind of COVID kind of helped me out with that, then I moved forward with it. Yeah, so then that that really brings us to the beginning of Bomb Face because I mean, as as your mom saw it in you at a young age, you had that knack for artistry, you know, mm -hmm. just being able to to draw cartoons. So as you started thinking about, okay, what is it I'm gonna do? I mean, because entrepreneurship takes a leap of faith. Correct. We know that, like it's you betting on yourself. Correct. Uh, what was that moment for you to be like, you know what, I, I I'm gonna do this, and this is how I'm gonna make my living. Oh, so. The, the the final the final moment was uh, I saw, I saw, so I collab with my um, I got a, br a brother that I, I, he lives in Vegas I collab with him on the image and uh, because the character that you see on on your sweatshirt mm -hmm. is actual my brother's face he got a gap in his teeth so mm -hmm. and it's his tight eye so I put that in his his musical name is Bomb Face so that's where I I drew the initial name and then I came up with the image in collaboration with my brother Yahuana so came up with the image with him. Um, and we put it on t-shirts and I was like, dude, I can do something with this. So I was still selling cars at the time. 
um, my manager was uh, looking at me. He's like, dude, it's like, like you're not here. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I quit. Mm. And that was, the, that was the defining moment for me because um, my passion, it felt like I can uh, put all my, my heart, my love, my soul into a brand. So I felt it at that moment when he said that. Um, and right then in that moment, I knew that, you know, this was, it was for me the time to take a leap of faith and get out there and do it on my own. Well, I, I got to tell you, you know, I was, I mean, you saw me, I was at your booth going yes. crazy. I'm like, oh my God, because honestly, a lot of people do try to get into fashion, but you have to understand what you said you understood fabrics. You have to be able to understand Correct. how it's going to all come together. And Correct. so, you know, your mom being a seamstress plays well into your entrepreneurship right Correct. now to this day. Correct. How does your mother influence, you know, how it is that you're now able to say, no, nah, I'm going to go with this manufacturer. I'm going to pick this fabric. I'm going to make sure my hoodies are of this high quality. How is it that you were able to bring that into the bomb face as a, as a brand? So um, I, my mom used to make uh so like my, I had a, I got coming from a big family, I family of ten. Mm -hmm. My dad got married twice, but the uh, the the initial part is my mom used to make prom dresses, suits, and different things like that. He, she used to make my dad's suits. So we used to go to the fabric store. She used to pick out different fabrics, and she's like, "Help me look for this, or help me look for that." And I'm gonna get a yard of this, or you know, what I mean, certain amount of length of different fabrics or whatever. And then so touching the fabrics, going through the store, you're just a kid. You're touching on all the fabrics. You're touching everything. And, don't put your hands on that. Don't touch this. Don't touch that. But her attention to detail, because when people used to come to her to the house and they, they used to just love her stuff. And she used to work with people in, in like in a seamstress like group of people and they were sewing different things like that. Mm. She was one of the season one, one of the best, better ones. So I learned that she was very talented. So my dad was like, hey, look, you should probably do something on your own. But she kind of took it for granted because it was a natural talent of her. So um, so seeing her go through that, those those ups and downs of like sewing, deal, dealing with people, people not liking certain things and what, what what they like. And she don't know that I was paying attention the whole time. I'm, you know, I'm seven, eight years old, but I'm paying attention the whole time while this, while this is going on. And so, um, but it's it just kind of like uh, information that dives into you and you don't forget because yeah. you get to see the interaction and different things like that. So that part of pay, played a big, uh, big role and not always, paid attention to style and fashion and, and like the men in my family are always dressed up. My, my cousin's a stylist uh, and he, he dresses people in suits and different things like that and preps weddings and stuff like that. So when I go buy my suits, I go buy them from him and he's always in style. I got, a, I got another little cousin who's a, who's a dancer, but he's always stylish. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So the man in my family, my brother, he's always like, you know, like the nice kicks. Nice. So that's kind of like in the family to dress nice and different things like that. But, you know, Having a background of, you know, knowing what the fabric is because, you know, know what the clothes is, how it's going to feel somebody what and especially being from the Northwest. We want everything to be warm and different things like that. So knowing the fabric, knowing what people are going to react to uh, and then putting some meaning behind it. You know, you're passionate, you know, and it comes together. Wow. I promise you, I'm always inspired by our, our local folks who step out on their own ones and twos to make things happen. Matt did that. And I really hope that you guys, again, are feeling good on this Feel Good Friday as Matt was able to kind of take us down his story. Again, you guys can find him on Bombface Co. on Instagram. Um, if you just look up Bombface, you guys will find it. and You'll see that amazing logo there of a bomb face um, as he described there with his uh friend there with the with the smaller eyes and the gap tooth smile uh it's an amazing story and please you know shop locally anytime you can guys right after this short break i got to sit down with dr relina joseph of the uw she talks about their inter up in program. It's like interrupting a uh, pr privilege program. And it's really amazing because the UW is being very specific and intentional to bring diverse voices together and to spotlight diversity in an interge intergenerational way. I uh, loved being able to sit down and learn more from her um, just earlier today. So please take a look right here. Um, after this short break, we're going to be bringing you Dr. Rolina Joseph's interview. You're watching Feel Good Friday. It's time to dust off your passports. It's 
Virgin Verge Media is heading to Central America with Alaska Airlines on November 19th for their inaugural non-stop flight to Belize City, Belize, as we celebrate Garifuna Settlement Day, one of Belize's biggest national holidays uplifting Afro-Caribbean culture. The whole Converge Media squad, including Trey Holiday, Jake Gravbrot, Basa Gordon, Julia Jesse, T-Dub, Cool Nuts, Curtis Delgado, and me, the Big O, are hopping on the Alaska jet and getting fresh stamps as we explore Belize's natural beauty, food, art, history, music, and of course, the people. Make sure and follow Converge Media across all social platforms as well as our website as we spend one week in country and show you Belize as only Converge Media can. This unbelievable excursion is powered by our friends at Alaska Airlines and the Belize Tourism Board. Grab life in Belize. Where are you? <laughs> I'm in Belize, bro. <laughs> I get here. I want to dive into some of the things that you've been up to that maybe our audience is not aware of. I heard you've been on the scene with activism and black advocacy. Well, I try to do. I'm a dedicated social justice warrior, um, online uh, presence. It's uh, I love social media and I love I grew up. I'm not young, so I grew up watching it the technology advance and and jumping in and diving in into uh, every new development. And now that we have this uh, wonderful digital media to uh, not only share information, but to gain uh, information and, uh, and social interaction, it gives us a chance to um, maybe do some good, you know, if, uh, if that's your intent. So I try to to stay active that way. And uh, since I'm just now getting back into performing, the opportunities to uh, do the things that motivate me, uh, like I, I'd like to, are getting more and more um, possible uh, where I had to take a little time off for a while. Well, we're so glad that you're back on the scene. And, you know, uh, America, we know you uh, as a, a star comedian. Like, you really come with it. Your personality always shines. And, you know, I'm glad to see you back at it. I, we know venues were hit hard by COVID-19 as well. So a lot of performers, comedians, a lot of folks have had to, like, adjust. How have you been adjusting during this period of COVID? Well, it's just my luck. I, like I said, I took about 15 years or more off. And then uh, in about 2015, 16, I started working again. And then uh, as uh, finally getting my act together, because um, I think a lot of people, when they take time off, they think that they can just jump right in line where they were and uh, everybody's going to be, hey, you know, welcome back. And that's not really how it works. You, um, as a stand-up, I had to start all over again. And uh, so I was just getting my groove back, as they say. And uh, boom, you know, the world shut down. And so um, I'm being very proactive as far as uh, COVID vaccines and, uh, and advocating for uh, people, especially black people who are understandably leery, uh, but uh, advocating for us to protect ourselves as best we can. And at the moment, this is the best we can. So uh, I just took my third shot, my booster shot, I get because I'm old and, uh, uh, and I'm fine. You know, I, my nose, the, the second nose has receded back and my ears are not as big as they were when I got the shot. Uh, and I know I get radio signal. So, you know, that's a good or bad thing. I have to carry my earbuds. But, you know, um, I, I, I try to navigate that as best as possible. So I have uh, some shows coming up and things that I'm doing and hopefully safely and uh where people can uh, get back to looking at each other face to face and and uh, laughing and talking and having a good time. 
Well, thanks again, you guys, for joining us. This interview coming up is Dr. Relina Joseph of the UW. She's going to be telling us about some efforts that they had to be very intentional after 2016 when the country went through a, a tremendous presidential uh campaign and we all dealt with the fallout kind of of it there were some where it said that it divided the country there was a need for these discussions to happen listen to dr relina joseph tell us more about it we've been hearing a little bit about this you know exchanging emails but you know this is a, a innovative program to be honest tell the folks a little bit more about this interrupting privilege program yeah absolutely thank you so this is a program that we began at our center in 2016 so when the former president came came into office. Uh, that fall of 2016, if you remember, our communities were really desperate to talk about race, about race and its intersections, about power and privilege. So we began these intergenerational racial dialogues um, that were in an in interracial space. And so for the first number of years, we brought in different groups of folks to have conversations together. And then after doing that, we pivoted to having all black conversations. So we wanted to have some intraracial conversations as well that were hosted initially by uh, the Northwest African American Museum at NAM, and then we had to move online. And so at the centerpiece are our dialogues where we bring folks in to have all different types of conversations about what does it mean to quarantine while black? What does it mean to be a black student in Seattle public schools? What does it mean to be a young black man in a white fraternity? All different types of conversations. You know, this is really unique. And I think that it hits the mark about kind of the, the zeitgeist we're in right now. When we think about the times that we're in and, and how we're having to navigate so many different things, these kind of conversations are integral to understanding where we are as a society and where people are individually. What are some of the things that you see, you know, students walking away from these conversations with greater understanding about themselves? I think that what students learn is really how to listen better. Uh, what we teach is this idea around radical listening. How do you really hold someone else's story and not interpret it through all of your own frames, but really hear it in the ways in which they want for you to hear them and that you, they want for you to understand them. And so that means really being able to pause your own judgment and really focus entirely on them as a speaking partner. And most of us don't do that in our daily lives. So we practice that a lot. And that's what our session that we're inviting people into is going to be about. Um, and that's what the website is going to invite people into as well. Yeah, because you guys are launching a website. Um, and so I know you want to tell us a little bit about that too. What is it going to mean for a community for them to be able to be engaged in these discussions and maybe, you know, connecting through that website? Yeah. So um, our website uh, has the last four years of projects. So we, we began with our first project that was on the first time you ever experienced discrimination. So people came in to tell their stories. Um, we had some elders coming in and talking about segregated water fountains. Um, so, you know, some, some folks that, that came from the South. And then we had college students talking about being in the dorms. So really a wide variety of stories there. To our second project that was around Generation Mix Goes to School. So mixed race kids, uh, K-12, and their experience, all different types of experiences of racialization, and what those look like. To are being black in Seattle and then our quarantining while black projects. And so they really provide um, a way in for people to hear a variety of different types of stories. And these might be um, researchers, they might be students or teachers or community members, people who want to come in and you can search through topics. If you're interested in hearing and learning more about microaggressions, you can search for that. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in learning more about black masculinity, you can search for that. And really um, not be told by somebody about what the its stories are, but really hear the voices of the people who are um, are experiencing these things and want to share out um, in their own voice what their experiences are. Yes, 
Yes and yes. Such a needed effort, you guys. I hope you guys really uh, do connect. I mean, they're launching their website. They want people from the community to be engaged, just as engaged as they have been with this discussion series. And, you know, it's exciting because it, it, it takes bold measures in the times that we're in right now to really show leadership around what diversity can look like and what inclusion really looks like. You know, DEI has become a hot topic, but what does it really mean for institutions like the UW to be bold about their approaches. And so thanks to everybody who's over there at that effort, making sure that these diverse discussions are happening, these intergenerational discussions are happening, and that the community is engaged and involved. Right after this break, you guys, I sat down with Marsha Warfield and Dr. Arisha De Abodola as they talk about this year's African-centered thought, the Institute of African-centered thought, and their ancestral healing conference, paying homage to Dr. Maxine Mims. Stay tuned right after this short break. You guys will hear more right after this. You're watching Feel Good Friday. On October 23rd, we unveiled the new Converge Media Studios to Stephanie Johnson Tolliver of the Black Heritage Society of Washington State, who along with Damon Brown of Creative Lou, designed our interview wall with epic images of Seattle's black community of yesteryear from the late Al Smith's photography collection at Mohai. We often speak about our past, our community, our culture, our traditions. Though times have changed for us here in the Emerald City, Converge Media is firmly rooted in our history and grounded in our legacy while focused on the future. We want to say thank you to all of you who support Converge Media. Just know that you are the difference. You made this studio possible, and because of you, we continue to grow and thrive in our purpose. So be on the lookout for new, impactful, and educational programming from Converge Media. And remember, Black Media Matters. Welcome back, everybody, to Feel Good Friday. I'm your host, Trey Holiday, and this last segment is very uplifting. I was able to participate in the a Institute of African Center Thoughts African um, Ancestral Healing Conference um, some years back, and it was so life-changing for me to hear from the speakers that Dr. Arisha Day Abadola brings here to the city of Seattle. Uh, this year, the whole effort is going to be happening over in Tacoma as they share not only um, the legacy of Dr. Maxine Mims, but also bringing in some amazing speakers. You guys, this is a phenomenal opportunity to get engaged and get plugged in with a lot of the ways that African ancestry has really permeated so much of our culture. And sometimes it's been hidden. So we need to bring these uh, practices back into tradition um, in our families and the ideas that, you know, there's speakers that can give you some practical tips and things that you can be doing with your families. This is an amazing place to hear more about that. So so right uh, now, we're going to uh, transition and let you guys hear from uh, Marsha Warfield, who will be there um, doing some uh, comedy through healing. And it's going to be really interesting to have her as a part of this because she brings her activism to the forefront as well. And also hear from the founder of IACT and the Ancestral Healing Conference, Dr. Arisha Day herself. But it started because when I got out of recovery, out of treatment for substance abuse, I wanted to know how a black woman had a name like Denise Villavaso. That was my born given name. And I asked my father and he said, you Creole, what does that mean? And so I started studying the family tree and found out because I'm from New Orleans that the enslavers were from Balboa, Spain and my people worked on their sugarcane plantations. That's where that name, and that's how it started. And, and, and it started as a result of the fourth step of the 12-step program here in Seattle at the 1504 Club. Because I came directly here out of treatment in 1992 because I landed the job with the post intelligencer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I, I was with the, I don't know if you probably may not remember Mickey Flowers, but you do know Deborah Horn. And I was with that black journalist and BJ as the black journalist of uh, association in Seattle. And so, uh, you know, all of the, many of the older journalists, we were, I was a part of all of that. And so what happened was I was, you know, writing circles on Prozac and they were saying I didn't have a psychology. I didn't know that. So I went back to school at Antioch 
got my degrees and moved back east for another 15 years. Came back, and that's how it started. Because I, I sit as a therapist, clinical in in DC, I realized when I was doing what I call ancestral healing workshops, well, it was only genealogy. Their people was healing from that, but they wasn't healing from the Prozac. I remember the case that stands out the most is this little girl that was eight, and the doctor, a white psychiatrist, the treat we had treatment to. He said, write her diagnosis as ADHD. I said, but that's not her issue. She drew me this picture, a stick picture of her holding her mother's hand. Her mother was in the shelter and on crack. All the girl wanted to do was be with her mother. This white psychiatrist, he didn't. He said that, uh, my computer's doing crazy things. He said that the reason, <clears throat> He said that, uh, yeah, he said that he, um, if we didn't diagnose her with that, we wouldn't get paid. And so from then on, I continued. <clears throat> I did the first ancestral workshop, healing workshop at Antioch in 1998. It was just a day event when I first found out about Willie Lynch. And then the spirit guided me and guided me. And I went back and I got my degrees and and I switched from clinical and I didn't become licensed as a psychologist because after knowing and teaching at the University of the District of Columbia, I would they would have revoked my license because it wasn't in alignment with the licensure protocol, you know. When you get licensed, you have to follow their guidelines. And anything talking about black healing on any spiritual level is not part of that process. Right. right. Well, what an amazing Feel Good Friday it has been. And thank you all for supporting this show and supporting the efforts over here at Converge to every Friday make you guys feel good. I'm glad that we were able to sit down with so many amazing folks. And honestly, me being able to sit here and interview folks and learn more and expose them to our audience is such an amazing pleasure for me. Thank you so much for joining me on this Feel Good Friday. I hope all that great information and insight coming from all these amazing people help to make you feel good on this amazing Friday. Don't let the gloomy weather get you down. And as always, and as they've all done, they have saw themselves as a part of the solution. You guys know that that is my moniker. If you are out there doing the work to see yourself as a part of the solution, trust and believe it is appreciated in more ways than you'll ever know. Thank you guys again for watching Feel Good Friday. We'll be back at you next Friday.